Now we're on audio, not video. Good to see everyone. Kurt, uh, Fraley, we were talking about you. Yep. Hello, Manda, as always. Hello, Manda's, Manda's crocheting. <gasps> as she should, as is her right. As is her talent, too. One of many. One of mm -hmm. many. I love the little uh, picture she sends me. I love you, Manda. If you're watching, listening right now, and you don't love Manda, you can leave. Get out. Yeah. Get out. We don't need you. I'm Bye. sorry. Yep. Out. Bye. And what, oh, no, 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 no. Hello, no, Robert. Patrick, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. It was it was good things. It was a, like, I'm handing a printer off to you because I can't use it right now. No, he oh. said uh, he said that um, he much preferred anything that he you could do for he could do for you than I could do uh, Patrick and that you reviled all of my well, offers and you know it's it's a it's 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 it that's one way to interpret what said. <laughs> yes um, <laughs> assassin talk Your site was mute. Your site was muted. You missed it. Oh no! We love you, Jason. Hello. We love you. All right. Hello. We're gonna go ahead and kick off our uh, preview video, and then we'll jump into tonight's uh, session. It's gonna be fun. Looking forward to the topic, oh. assassins. We've dealt with it previously, but not the way we will deal with it tonight. We will touch on some of the things we touched on before, and I will warn my two co-hosts. Once I get into any Dragon magazines, I've gotten worse about this. I have so many things that are completely off topic uh, that I want to talk about tonight. So we're just going to go on a wild ride and enjoy ourselves. And here That's is my favorite. <laughs> All right. And here is our opening intro. Blue box. Lore Masters Arcanum 137 Assassins again. Hey, Twy. Luchetos. Yeah, Jason, I, man, it's good to see you in tonight as well. I know uh, we've been kind of talking back and forth, but just really appreciate all the support from our longtime fans. Enjoy talking about Altamira last week, too. That was a fun conversation. That was, that was an absolute blast. It was so fun. I would redo it all over again if I could every second of the day. Rachel, I loved you. Like you were such an encouragement last night too in our LM, our uh, GHA episode. Like you're just like. It was so fun. I yeah. missed Dark Sun so much. Yeah, it was. If you haven't seen Dark Sun? You should totally watch it and catch up on it because we're not too far ahead. It's really good. It's really good. And John, uh, Demon Gun, gave the most incredible synopsis of our last episode. Yes. Uh, it was like. It's 15 minutes long, but it's amazing. It was so cool, especially I if, like, know, it was set in the world. Is, by is someone. he is he taking notes? That is that just his no no. E export no. the transcript, <laughs> take the transcript, pop it into AI tools, curate it. Yeah, it. Yeah, he he spent like four hours on that. I did not ask him to. Like yeah, I I did not ask him to. He just did. <laughs> That's what I love about this community. I know, like, Players people do stuff all the time. Like, wait, so what? Much. You're doing what? Welcome, Lore Masters Arcanum 137. Um, incredible to have my co-hosts here tonight, Kurt and Rachel. We're talking assassins, and we're going to go all the way from 1E to 5E. We've touched on this topic before, but never in the way we will tonight. We will go through some of the Dragon magazines we've talked about before, like 220 and 64, but man, I think this is going to be such a fun conversation. I want to say, to begin with, Kurt. Hmm? Your spooky tree. I love my spooky tree. Uh, we can't see. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you can you uh, no. pull? pull oh, yeah, it's, it's cut off in frame on the. Okay. All right, y'all. Right? <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. This 
is my spooky tree. Why? Because Christmas is not the only thing that gets a tree. Halloween can get a tree too. Why? Because trees can be spooky. So I have a Halloween tree. I have a spooky tree. John thinks I'm in the wrong, but I say I'm just having fun. So, uh. <laughs> Stick it to us. St and, and yes, I yes, I, I no trees are for, uh, all right. Just then, what makes the Christmas tree unique? The ornamentation, the decoration. Yeah, the decoration. But it, it, do they look all that different? So you don't have Michael Myers on the Christmas. I know that, but. I'm looking at that. If you didn't call attention to it, I bet your Christmas tree, Kurt, will not look all that different. No, my Christmas tree looks totally different. Do you know why? Because of my Christmas tree, it is covered with pictures of my kids. It's covered with pictures and ornaments that they have handmade. It's made with family heirloom ornaments. It's got like, it's <laughs> like this whole kaleidoscope from like 1910 to now, right? It's got like, it's got wooden stuff on like this. This is just for funsies, you know, like this is, that's all this is. It's for Yeah, funsies. John, you're just a hater. I am. I think it's, he's not a I hater. think, I think it is absolutely evil and personifies the class we discussed tonight. All right. <laughs> Assassins. Um, we're going to do a, a little dance through the editions. Uh, we're going to talk about 1E, which we've discussed before. I'm going to see how much the two of you are familiar with the 1E because again, while I play 3.5, I still love the non-nerfed aggressiveness of That's the so older additions. Yes. <laughs> uh, but as I get into this tonight, I would like to start with Kurt and Rachel. Tell us projects you're working on, things you have upcoming. Uh, Kurt, maybe you can talk about Blue Box Studio B, your Ragnarok uh, work that is, I mean, that cover art was insane. So, so. We got cover art and some interior art back on Ragnaborg, which I will probably throw up in the blue box. Display, Please do. Probably in a week or so. Um, uh, as uh, past that, Studio B, which uh, those of you who remember Erica, who is my co-writer with um, uh, for Ragnaborg, we are opening Studio B. And uh, with John's blessing, right, Studio B is going to be where you will find all of the quote unquote other stuff. We'll just leave it at that. So, um, uh, wait now. Okay. Other stuff. other stuff still within the confines of the blue box core values. It's a So like as a, no, so like as a prime example, right. Um, something that has been beaten up to me is people want an ongoing series of something like Vassin or something like call of Cthulhu or something like that. Right. That would be a studio B project versus it being a, core regular blue box fantasies you know very hardcore fantasy setting right or you might see some like i don't know 5e stuff happening on over there um but uh you know things like that right um as for other things um uh kurt is currently uh in cahoots writing a project known simply as um as below so above uh and we'll leave it at that um uh, and that's um, about it uh, for this guy. That that works. Uh, now, Amanda said you're a little bit quiet. You sound good to me. So anyone else? Uh, let's go through. Um, do re mi. Kurt. Do a deer. Rachel. A female deer. Ray. A drop of golden sun. Me. Me. I call myself. <laughs> all right. So you all sound good to me. Can anyone? Can anyone tell us? Is it? Are, are we all sound good on my end? If there's someone quiet, please let me know. Yeah, international man of mystery, Kurt. Yeah, I'm a mystery to myself most of the time. All right. Well, we'll keep going. We'll watch for that. Uh, Rachel, what stuff are you working on? Nothing nearly as cool. A little um, faded I... compared. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. I am doing schooling, as usual, as it happens to be in college. Uh, on Sundays, you can catch me on Tears of Air. It is Mila. It's a fun, fun time. Things are getting real, real saucy, real fun. Not saucy in that way, though. <laughs> well, maybe, things, maybe. Things, well, maybe. You'd have to tune in to find out, folks. Um, I'm doing some writing for that, you know, a little bit of Mila journal backstory type stuff. And I also might be writing a little bit of a song. 
but that is probably going to be far later in the future. Mm. Writing a song in conjunction with Tears of Aired or writing a song that yes. we're going to hear? Okay, gotcha. Uh, something from Mila's backstory. Oh, I love that. All right, so as we begin tonight, uh, Kurt, why don't you kick us off? Assassins. Assassins! You know them, you love them, they'll stab you in the back, and they'll most likely slit your throat in your sleep. Why? Because you were the target the whole time. Um, assassins. We've had them from 1E, we've had them all the way up until now, right? So here's the thing about assassins, which I find interesting, and is my little kickoff, kickoff note, right? It has been addressed before, but not with this guy or this wonderful woman. So, assassins, up until 5E, right? Up until 5E, right? Assassins always had to be evil. That was a core thing. Their alignment had to be evil, right? There were some very niche cases, which we're all aware of, right? Um, uh, that, uh, that could be worked in, right? But I'm always su super, super curious, right? Because assassins are so cool. They're neat. Everybody thinks they're awesome. Everybody wants to be John Wick in his heyday. Um, so, like, right? So, like, how, John, did you incorporate an evil character into your party, utilizing those old rules? Or did you just kind of overlook that? And if so, if so, follow on, right? How did you make an assassin good? All right. So... Lovely question. In the original first edition, Assassins had to be evil. Uh, that was a wreck. And I've seen that carried over to many other editions. And of course, like with all things 5e, ah, alignment, who cares? Uh, but I have, I have fudged that rule on occasion. My rule has been Assassins generally cannot be good, but they can be neutral. And they can even be lawful. So, Rachel... Give me an example. If you think about D&D, &D, what would be an example? Uh, you could even use a, a trope outside of D&D, &D, a popular culture, movie, book. What would a, a lawful, neutral assassin look like? Oh, that's such a good question. Lawful, neutral. So based off of what I know about alignment, which might not be as extensive as some other. Please leave that disclaimer out. We, you're, you're, you're part of LMA. You're a lore master now, so. Oh my gosh, you're so right. I am. <laughs> I'll put that on my resume. Um, <laughs> lawful indicates that you have some sort of rule set that you kind of live by. Neutral is, true neutral is different, of course, than lawful neutral, but it entails a, um, neutrality in that it's either more self-absorbed of you do what you want or it is neutral in the way you see the world and act within it of something might be good but you don't go into it as it is if that makes sense um so for assassins it would be you have your own rule code as to like potentially who you kill how you kill what goes into that but you either do it in a way that pleases yourself or um helps yeah helps yourself all right so um kurt i i i, I, I <laughs> first of all rachel could almost say anything she could tell me the sky's green and i would almost agree oh with God. her she's so persuasive but i i felt there were a couple of things there that were did you sense anything that didn't quite fit with lawful neutral yes right so okay so here's the thing Right? I personally don't think you could have a lawful neutral assassin. Right? Really? Here is why. Right? Because through the process of being an assassin, the whole point of being an assassin is you're a killer. Right? Mm -hmm. That is the point. There's no assassin that exists where their job isn't to end the life of another human being. That is, or another creature, rather. That is an assassin's job. Right? So being lawful neutral and an assassin yes you could have a code of ethics so to speak right but realistically your code is gonna have to shift no matter what 
because depending upon the target you're after, right, you could in turn violate your own ethics, right, by by just simply taking a job. Or Kurt, you- I love this. If you were right, I would agree with you. <laughs> I am. <laughs> no, I you am. are totally wrong. So, so look. Like, so, okay. 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 So, so wait, 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 wait. Hold, I, I, I'll let you talk. I'll, I, I'll let you do some talking. But yeah, a paladin by nature mm-hmm. wants to exterminate evil oppressors, things which are you know painful to neutrality. They have to kill. Mm-hmm. They or they don't have to, but they often do. It could be necessary, and they know that to adhere to their code, they're going to have to confront evil. And in some cases, that confrontation will result in a martial outcome, which is death. Correct. Why could you not have? Um, let me let me. Mm, do I want to go there? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. No, no, this is more like about the. So. I don't want to get into politics. No. If no, you no. disagree with this statement, uh, please, I'm not make. But if you take someone like the individual who went in on Osama bin Laden, okay, he was sent there to go after mm-hmm. the individual responsible for the 9/11 attacks. You know, it was two days ago. Mm-hmm. 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 He's only going to follow the code of his country. The paladin's going to follow the code of his god. So therefore, his mm-hmm. law. This is where I was kind of tweaking on Rachel a bit, mm-hmm. it's not what feels good to him. That's not law. That's actually chaos. Whatever feels good to me, that's chaos. Mm-hmm. Law is right. I'm following to a code above me or higher than me. Why can you not have an assassin, Kurt, that is lawful, following to a code higher than himself, whether it's a government, a god, uh, whatever it may be. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. wh- wh- I mean, an inquisitor, a uh, uh, oh, uh, Wheel of Time, not Pat and Fane. Uh, who's the, uh, the the White Cloaks? The White, the white, the white Cloaks, cloaks. the White Cloaks. Who's the leader of the White Cloaks? Uh, crud. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Talking he's about. lawful. He's lawful evil, but he's lawful. He he's following a code, right? He is. Yeah, go ahead. He is. All right. right? But that's why I'm getting it. That's, that's the point that I'm getting at, right? Okay. All right. Because here's the thing. When you have lawful neutral, right? When you look at lawful neutral, the only thing that truly matters is that code. It has to be unwavering, right? Lawful good, you can justify any action you're doing because you are doing it in the name of good. No matter what your code says, right? Ultimately, you have the fallback that you can justify using the example that you just did, right? Like the example that you just did, right? that soldier is following orders he is following the orders but he's following orders of an oath that he swore to take right but he will not harm innocents that's the key thing right that's what his oath will prevent him from doing okay i did not intend to make this morality 101 uh i'm not and i'm not going to argue i want rachel to talk about this this is where the nuance of neutral and good can get very mm-hmm. blur and neutral and evil. Yeah. Everyone who follows the code that that is of their authority thinks they're in the right and thinks they're good. So how how does that individual so clearly fall? We're not talking about assassins in the context yeah, of this no. game, but Rachel, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to argue with the fact that um, Kurt had said that um, assassins can't be lawful neutral because of the jobs that they might have to take that might um, mess with that but mm-hmm. why wouldn't they just not take those jobs that might go against their lawful beliefs so they could just the be very the, picky so the answer to that right is nine times out of ten right now i'm i a hundred percent right if you can prove to me a niche case right i'll hear it out right because there always will be a niche case right but a law a lawful neutral assassin right is gonna adhere to one thing and one thing only, the next payday. They get paid to do what Wait, they Wait, they don't do. have to be paid? Yes, they do. No, you could have a priest, assassin. you could have a priest that is following the law of the church, n- n- making nothing but the cassock he wears on his back, but why he follows he that paladin? edict lawfully without pay. Why, why wouldn't he just be a paladin then? Why would he be an assassin? Well, because the whole he's- point Okay, the sorry. whole point of an assassin 
right, is you are your fear. Fear is one of your greatest tools as an assassin. People are afraid of you, right? And by that nature of them being afraid of you, right? Batman, as a prime example, right? Fear was his greatest weapon. Again, with um, what, what with alignment? Would, what, what alignment would you call Batman? Batman? Oh, he's lawful evil through and through, hundred percent. He's Wait. lawful evil. Uh, yes. okay. Yeah. No, no. They have done full. They have done full. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know what? I've not gotten to the Arkham Knights. There's probably a lot more of this I don't know. I'm talking about old school Batman, like way back many oh, years so ago. He was. So am I. Uh, oh my. All right, so he's a billionaire who spends his evenings dressing up and beating up criminals. Criminals. So that makes him evil? No, he's a vigilante. Our vigilante is 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 Click evil. Vigilantes are bad guys. Oh. I don't know so so David and guys. Click are evil, Rachel? Do you agree? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I no. Just, no, 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 I, 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 so, no, 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 all right, can, can somebody put up, wait, hold on, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait I'll, I'll let you guys talk, hang on, uh, uh, Amanda, someone, can you put up in the chat, uh, options for Batman's alignment, and le I don't know the latest uh, Arkham Knight games, but like, Batman, historically, over the last 30, 40 years, historically, let, let's say is he, he's definitely not lawful good, let's say is he neutral good, is he lawful neutral, or is he, would you say chaotic evil, Kurt? No, he's, he's lawful, lawful evil. evil. Lawful evil. Lawful All right, evil. so put those up. Sort of law, because he has the whole thing of like, I'm not going to kill. But he shirks law. He's like knocking No, but he's a vigilante, he shirks law. Sometimes he follows, sometimes the bat signal goes up and he does No, but he has the... his own law. Exactly, which means he's not following law. If it's your, Ra oh, boom, Rachel, this is what we were talking about earlier. So if it's your own law, it's not law. I the whole idea of lawful. Beg to differ. Okay, well then, anyone would say they're lawful. If it's the morality I generate from within, then we're all lawful, no matter what we do. There are rules that an individual might have in place that they follow. It could be set by them. It could be set by an organization. It could be set by a higher power. But either way, there are the rules that they stick to. So if I stick to rules that are purely of my own. Mm -hmm. yeah. No outside influence. By definition, then I'm lawful. I would say, once again, from my definition of what lawful neutral is, yes. No, I'm talking about, I, 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 so just lawful. So if I follow my own rules, uh -huh. no outside influence, I'm therefore lawful. I, 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 Rachel, I know I can be so like, I, I'm not trying to be mean. Like, I, I love this conversation. No, this good. is a, we're, we're going to get to assassins at some here's, point, but here's, here's, the, here's the whole reason oh to God. bring it back around to assassins, right? Yeah. To bring it back around to assassins, right? The core thing, the reason why I say you can't have lawful neutral and you can't have any form of good assassin, right? Is because the core thing I went through and I looked, I couldn't find the one E example, right? But I looked at, I looked at, 2e i looked at 3.5 i looked at pathfinder i looked at um uh, i looked at fourth edition fifth edition does not have this rule but there is one core thing that is required of all assassins and that is they must kill right now the moment you are willing to take a life no matter wait, what wait so they no must wait 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 uh, let, let me uh, so you got to be careful with straw men so you're inserting so they must kill that is that is correct. Uh, no, I don't agree with that. No, no they, okay. it's not that they must requirements, kill. Requirements, requirements to qualify an assassin, you must meet the following criteria. And what are you reading from, by the way? What edition? Uh, this is three point five. Okay. And then we then we can go to. No, I, I mean, no, no. Please finish to the following criteria. Any evil alignment. Right. This is also a prestige class. Right. Right. Um, your any evil alignment. Uh, you must have disguise four ranks, hide four ranks, move silently four ranks. Okay. Right? Special. The character must kill someone for no reason other than to join the assassins. That's 3.5. All right. So. Is that. It, that you, and when you say 3.5, you literally mean 3.5, not PF1E. Correct. 3. Okay. 5. All right. Yeah. All right. Pathfinder. Due to the due to the necessity of the necessary selfishness and callous indifference towards taking lives, 
The assassin class attracts those with evil alignments more than any other. Because the profession requires a degree of self-discipline, chaotic characters are ill-suited to becoming shadowy killers. Neutral characters sometimes can become assassins. So now the lawful. Frequently, frequently thinking of themselves as simply professionals performing a job, yet the nature of their duties inevitably pushes them towards evil alignment. That is Pathfinder 1E. Now we go to the Assassin's Handbook. But right? but but the Pathfinder 1E didn't say they had to kill. 3.5 did, but there was no PF1E said they had to kill or the callousness of, I mean, that was pretty hard language in 3.5. Yeah. I, I, in, I, in the Assassin, due to, the ne due to its necessary selfishness and callousness and indifference towards taking lives, that implies that was PF one E. Take a life. That was PF one E. Okay. That is straight out of the book, right? All, all of their, all of their stuff is one hundred percent set up to where they are ambushers, they are surprise attackers, and they must kill. That's what makes them an assassin. So the idea of retaining neutrality, right, where you are quite literally deciding life and death does not make you neutral in any capacity whatsoever. What, what you mean with alignment or yeah, with, evil and good? Alignment. No, I'm just saying like, no, like law, uh, neutrality, or good and evil neutrality. No, no, no. Like with it, because you have to take lives, right? You have to take lives. The callousness that, you're, that you will never Why does that have life. to be callous? I, I'm, I'm hearing what, but why? Let's let's move aside from the additions. Yeah. Why does it have to be callous that you are going to take lives? Can you not take lives for purpose? Could be mercy. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's probably. But that good point, Rachel. I didn't think about that. That was not where it's going. But so, but right. I, no, but like again, back to the example of. I didn't see the poll up for Batman. Did that happen? I don't know who wants I can I can launch I it if so. Okay, here let me do it. All right. So what about um what about John Wick? What is he? John Wick John Wick stopped being an assassin when he became when he developed a moral compass. He always had a moral compass. No, he did not. He went he off because they killed his dog. Okay. No, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have every issue of John Wick. I have the entire comic issue book series. He was it's a comic book. No, it's a movie. It's a <laughs> I'm going to get out of the way while you guys take it out. Excuse me. <laughs> it wasn't until he met his wife that he developed a moral compass. He was known as Baba Yaga for a reason. He was scary. He killed relentlessly and he was a one man army. Right. That was the whole thing behind him. When he met his wife. Right. He developed a moral compass. He found something worth truly being good and living for. Right. But when your wife dies and then some idiot comes through, steals your car and kills your dog. The only things that are retaining your moral compass. Right. You kind of. Well, you know, I'm kind of thinking he's back. I'm just saying. So. All that was was But he, he still had a, had a purpose to kill. He was out to yeah. kill. He was he was, he was going out to was, kill everyone that had affected him, his, hurt his he family. He was. He stopped being an assassin the moment he had an alignment shift. Then something traumatic happened. Okay, so you're saying So so you're saying the definition of an assassin is just the alignment. No. It's a set of skills as well. Well, yeah, no, I'd say so you can't have that set of skills? And be a different alignment. You can, the set of skills we're looking at mechanics, right? We're well, no, at we're looking mechanics. at okay. Let's you and I both take a pause here. Let's okay. Rachel say some words, and we'll, we'll come I'm back to this. At mechanics. No, I'm enjoying I, this. Good. This is good. Go ahead, Rachel. Back and forth. I look. I'm I'm just sitting. I'm listening because I don't know that much about John Wick personally. I've seen a couple of the movies, but I that I mean, not. yeah, I, I've never read the comic books either. So yeah. I no, feel no, inequipped like, like, to speak on this. Like, quite literally, I'm topic. speaking from, from mechanics, right? From, from a mechanics perspective, right? Okay. Because here's the thing. If you have, um, if you have, uh, what's another one? Oh, 
prime example, right? An anti-paladin or a black clad paladin or a, you know, or something like that, right? Yeah. Through role play, if your alignment shifts, you are no longer a black clad paladin. You are no longer an anti-paladin. You are just a paladin, right? That's, that's part of the setup of that particular class, right? Now, granted, like I said, I am all for niche situations, right? But what I'm saying is, is that an assassin, right? A created assassin, character assassin, if you shift their alignment, they are no longer an assassin. They are something else. And which they piece of the alignment? You're saying they're shifting the neutrality of good and evil or the neutrality of law and chaos where they lose that? Good and evil, because it simply states via the mechanics of the rules, evil. But not in 5e. So was, but no, not in 5e, because um, in 5e, alignment is an optional rule. So because alignment is optional in 5e, right, then it only really matters when you choose to use alignment. Okay, so the poll is up. People can vote. What what alignment is Batman? Um, I might have missed one of the obvious, but I, mean, I think I went with the ones we talked. So chaotic good, neutral good, chaotic evil, lawful evil, chaotic neutral. Um, definitely don't think he's K-Newt, but um, uh, Kurt just voted. I saw that. <laughs> Kurt, that's so... <laughs> I, watched I watched Kurt move over. He hit a button. <laughs> you're, you're getting crushed, bro. I, so so ba to me, problem. Batman... Batman He's not really an assassin per se, uh, so, to, but I mean. So tell me this, tell yeah. me this, mm -hmm. tell me this, right? When it comes to Batman, right? Okay. Can somebody be good as a prime example, right? Can somebody be truly good when they keep a file on every single one of their friends, of their friends, which tells them exactly how to kill them? Is that a good person? All right, so this is now the second time your comic book knowledge is wiping me out because I don't know anything about Batman at that level in the same way John Wick. So you know more about these backstories. So I'm talking about the normal popular culture and to, like Kurt. That just you're... reminded me of Click because he had a journal in which he wrote Exa out the possible ways. Oh, that's so that true. Yeah. To kill his friends. And Thomas is a comic book guy too. Oh, all right. No. So all right. So. Um, Without any influence, John wins. Uh, it is neutral good. Everyone agrees Batman's purposes are good. He wants good. He is a vigilante. He does not completely shirk the law, but he goes around it sometimes, right? So also, they can say, what's it? Go ahead, Rachel. I was gonna say that also kind of leads to a fun opinion that I may have that might not be entirely uh, sound. Go ahead. Is, I feel like assassins I really like that 5e made, made the alignment just open because it allows the players of their characters to come up with the reasons as to why they are doing what they're doing, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. um, so I feel like assassins could be... I'm sorry, Rachel. Uh, suddenly I can't hear anything you're saying. You've been muted from somewhere. Uh, I don't know how that happened. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I had a very... <laughs> Oh, crap, I, I didn't mean to meet you again. I was, sorry, go ahead. I was trying to have fun. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, let's go ahead. <laughs> I feel like assassins could be any type of alignment with enough reasoning. Okay. So these are the niche cases that, that Kurt's talking about, right? All right. So let's jump in. Let's look at some materials uh, because I think our debate has been spirited and I'm, this, is, I'm this has been very warm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, le I'm, le I'm legitimate. Now, this is a legitimate question while John's pulling this stuff up, right? How, right? How can you say that an assassin, right, whose entire skill set is 100% based around individual one on one sneaking combat? No, right. no, no. Their skill sets are more than just, they have broader thief skills. They can climb walls. They can hide in shadows, just like rogues can. But, their entire okay, skill set is not dedicated. Here's, no, 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 no. Why wouldn't you just play a rogue then? Why did you go assassin? Because you have the ability to do that very nuanced and specific assassin attack that rogues can pick pockets. Assassins don't pick pockets in general. Uh, opening so, locks so might go to both play, but the assassin is one who is skilled in the art of ending a life, and that could be done in pursuit of law and or good. 
Hmm. Precisely. But Rogue's base still gets sneak attack. Yeah. But yeah. You can't do the whole assassin thing. Yeah. Like I, there, there's overlap. <laughs> all right. So so all right. So let, let's let, let <laughs> this is all right. So the main thing is we gotta respect the assassins not. The super fun module, a friend of our community, Leonard Lakofka. Um, I have not run this yet. I've always wanted to run it, but it's so complex and takes time. I've not had the opportunity for the right setting, but at some point I will run Assassin's Knot. Uh, we also have to uh, look at the, I mean, Assassin's of Dole Omroth. I'm a, such a huge fan of the old Merp stuff. Uh, Iron Crown, I've talked about this so many times. A great module. If you haven't seen it, check it out. At some point, I would like to, you want to talk about another system to run on Blue Box? People think that 3.5 or PF1E is complex and crunchy. Let me run an Iron Crown, Lore Master, Merp, Cest, I mean, it will like, yeah, it just, but it's fun. Like if you're, if you're crunchy. Having played, having played Iron Crown, right? My, one of my very dearest friends writes for Iron Crown right and one of the things that i have always said he's like iron crown's so great why because it's so realistic because i want realism in a fantasy game that's why ah uh, no 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 kurt gosh we're all doing some level of simulation i like this man you're fun to fight with the buses <laughs> the buses john speaking of the simulation <laughs> the oh my gosh. The i c kurt you can go ahead and share that with the with the with the audience again we talked yeah. about if we're living in a oh. simulation if we're living in a simulation here you go friends because the the, 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 the idea was in the 70s we had pong in television yeah. coleco atari pong now we have uh, as Rachel said, all the pixels with things like Baldur's Gate, Starfield, whatever else. Mm -hmm. How far has that come in 40, 50 years? Imagine a society 300 years, 1,000 years, 10,000 years. What would that look like? Mm -hmm. And to this, Kurt said, so, the bus. So this is why you're all in a simulation. You're sitting in your car driving down the road. You can reach over and touch the other side of your car. No problems whatsoever, right? In that same lane of traffic, there is a bus in front of you that seats two people, an aisle, and two people all in the same amount of space. Why? Because the coding's better. That's all. They got the best coders on the buses. Okay. Spatial awareness. All ah. right. Now, I love that because it does make you think, Kurt. I would encourage anyone to go out tomorrow, take a good sized tape measure, measure the width of a bus the width of a pickup truck and the width of a lane. And what you will find is the bus consumes a little bit more of the lane, but is basically the same width within a couple of feet and does fit. But is Kurt it, still made me think. It, yeah, you still, it. yeah. I'm a, I, 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 no, I wanna go measure it now, Kurt. Like, I'm like, am I right? Am I right? Maybe I'm not right. Listen here, <laughs> listen here. Your car is as wide as a bus, all right? I'm just pointing that out, all right? Just pointing that out. Okay. Um, 8.5 feet with max. Yes, uh, exactly. So the chat is, you guys are awesome tonight. Chart master is far yeah, crunchier. Are. Oh, yes. Lore master, chart master, ice. It wasn't just realism. It was, look, we all want a degree of how do you put yourself into that character and feel like you're living that character. And so the crunchiness is only to the degree it enhances that sense of I'm immersed. If I just sit down and say, we have no rules. Let's go hyperbole. No rules. Whatever class you want. You are what you want to be. You do what you want to do. Like, you're, you're 10th level. You got a plus 20 sword. You can do any. Okay, great. Let's do that. It will not create the immersion that the structure creates, which is not the goal of this show tonight, but it's what we find people like about these. Why do you want to go to Vassen? Why do you like Morkborg? Why do you want to? All these things have different set. Uh, uh, dread. Dread, right? The Jenga towers. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah. all of these things have, have elements to them which create the immersion of putting you in the character. And it's not just, oh, I am anything I want to be. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Okay. I don't think Assassin. you have any disagreement. No, Jason, I'm no. sorry, Jason. <laughs> you playing Dread with those ears uh, at the game keep. I can never get that out of my head, Jason. Rachel, you remember. 
Jason, one red, sat with yes. you and Kevin. Oh my yeah, God. yeah. Wait, I how could you so not know what I'm talking about, there. Rachel? He was right across from you. He was right next to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember Clarence, of course. Yes, Clarence. I, I loved him. Okay. All of his murderous ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's look at some Dragon Magazine stuff, and I promise you guys I would go a bit a roundabout way here tonight. We've talked about 220 before. Uh, we also have here tonight uh, Dragon Magazine 64. 64. Look at that cover art. My gosh. Pretty, pretty. We want the article, not the cover art. The article, not the cover art. <laughs> 64. No, we're, we're, we're going through more than the article. There are many. No, I like Kurt. You're gonna have to be patient. I know. Because I love I these know. walkthroughs. I know. So this is this is way back 1982. So I am 10, 11 years old at this point. 11, I would have been 11 in 82. Old school TSR. I want you guys to look at how good this was already happening. You had Role Master, which we just talked about, character law, mm -hmm. artwork. I mean, gosh, just incredible yeah wow. star frontiers is in here you're gonna see it like it's it's crazy what gary gygax and the, dave arneson the, the, spawned within 10 every, years this stuff blossomed go ahead kurt every time that gets me every time is the mail-in slips that they still <laughs> oh i know yes the oh mail-in slips <laughs> yes where it's all i want to i want to show that so you've got the mail-in slips in here all the cons there are so many conventions the old school game stores, the miniature figures, Realms of Wonder, 1983 fantasy art. Um, <laughs> these like amazing, a centerfold, uh, that's awesome. Um, you have Gary Gygax, new weapons. Look at one of Gary Gygax's new weapons in 82. The Caltrop too, the Caltrop, like a, 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 like a staple of D&D, &D, uh, also known as the D4, right? Mm -hmm. The the Caltrop, which we talked about, the blowgun. These were new. Too. Yeah, these were new. Yeah, ours are horrible. The new <laughs> weapons in this were from Gary, like the Garot. The Garot. Garot new in 1982. Crazy. Yes, the Lego. No, it, yes. it, Legos are not the same as good sharp D4s. Harpoons. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move quickly through this, but there's some other things I wanted to see, like new creatures. The Sorcerer's Scroll. Yes, Planetars new. new. <gasps> Planetars were new in '82, created by Gary and Solars. Why? Like these are, like we take them as staples now. They did yeah. not exist, and they came out originally in Dragon Magazine, and then wow. got. Abs you know, canonized in later editions of this the the stuff. Um, Greyhawk, of course, Southern Flaness. Mm -hmm. Giants in the Earth. Hold on, let me, let me zoom in more quickly. There are a couple things I wanted you to see here. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, Judges Guild. <sighs> Everyone knows Judges Guild. Awesome stuff. And. 25 complete so scenarios, cool. 60 cities, free city of Haven in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Um, all the game stores, the hobby stores now are so few and far between. I and miss then, that. I miss being able to look in a magazine and like, I'm going to go visit this town. Where's this place? Ah, there we go. Exactly. Yes, I know you can just Google it, but it's not the same thing. <laughs> it's not the same. All right, so I don't want to deal too much with this uh, content because we covered it before, but the Assassin's Guild, a great article back in 82, and it talks about dealing effectively with Assassin characters. They're not necessarily as impetuous as they appear uh, when they strike. Even Chaotix needs some sort of loose framework, which, again, like, Rachel, we're going to have a whole other LMA now on what does it mean to be lawful? Uh, because clearly I, I, I had no idea that was a confusing topic, um, but <laughs> it's, <laughs> uh, moreover, most assassination, I, I, again, lawful, or I'll, I'll stop. Lawful could follow a completely wrong law. Like if you are following Asmodeus, you know, mm -hmm. but he has strict edicts for you to follow, you could be lawful evil. Uh, so in D and D, Devils were traditionally what, and demons were traditionally what? Rachel? There was a, like alignment difference between devils and demons. There's oh, uh, oh, shoot. I think it was demons were 
uh, chaotic evil and devils. Exactly, are, lawful uh, evil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. But those demons still believe they're following something that they are fully convinced of in their own heart. They are persuaded of their perspective. They think they are right, but they are not following an edict or structure from a higher power. And I'm not saying that, again, that higher power is a, a god. Obviously, if you're a devil, you're following a lawful evil uh, structure. I digress. All right, so moreover, <laughs> most assassination attempts take a good deal of careful pre-planning. So this is the premeditated part I think Kurt was really talking about, which makes it tough to be uh, anything other than evil. But I would come back to some of the examples I gave, I think. I would argue. Go ahead, Ra uh, Rachel, argue, please. I, uh, I was just saying the what I said earlier about how I feel like assassins could be any type of alignment, depending on what their reasoning for doing it is. Because they could be doing it. We'll we'll talk about it on the other LMA. No, I no, I think I th I, 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 I honestly oh. I agree with you. Uh, let, let, let let let's let's walk through these because I am very strict about alignments in certain cases. Mm -hmm. I think paladins should be lawful good. If you're not lawful good, you're something other than a paladin. An assassin is, I think, the point Kurt is making here. So he's kind of on the I, I'm I'm on the opposite side of my own argument here. I've got to really question this, but. I think the idea that I'm an expert at killing, even killing by, so a ninja, mm -hmm. someone mentioned the Bushido code, samurai earlier in the chat, mm -hmm. a ninja, these were expert at assassination, but they were not necessarily right. evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kurt? Uh, I would say that that is, a, uh, I would say that in that matter, you're using the example as a ninja, right? Okay, ninjas weren't just assassins. That's the whole point. Well, so then it's it's assassins. the name. It's just the name because assassins aren't just. They don't just have to in a in a campaign. So, a, an assassin so, doesn't have to walk around trying to constantly kill people. No, 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 no. It's it's a matter it's a matter of method, right? Okay, so like when you're as a prime example, right? One of the things that as because when you look at like well, fighters take lives, correct? But here's the thing, right? fighters right for the most part right they're gonna square off against you you're gonna see your opponent you're going to attack your opponent right they're gonna see you and you're gonna see them and you're gonna attack one another right an assassin is entirely based around killing you catching you when you are completely unaware and not being seen not being caught whatsoever I'm going to call that a specious comparison. I think there are plenty of examples of fighters who were who were using cover, leaping out from behind trees, trying to gain advantage because they didn't want to get shot or killed, and they weren't okay. necessarily going toe to toe, you know, like Muhammad Ali uh, and 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 squaring up with you. They were using the terrain or whatever method they could to get advantage. The fact that the quote unquote assassin, any more than the rogue, guess how the rogue fights. The rogue rarely squares off directly. He's going to use shadows. He's going to hide. He's going to use that subterfuge, but you're not putting that same requirement of alignment on the rogue. No, I'm not, because a rogue's actual purpose isn't to kill. A rogue's purpose is not to kill. Is the rogue's purpose purely rogue, to steal? The rogue stems from the thief class, right? It is a person that opens doors, right, and is very much troped up, as your as a thief just that they're thieves they're not fighters they're not they can defend themselves yes but they are not frontline fighters in any capacity whatsoever right a rogue is not engineered to do that all right um whereas an ass an assassin is a hundred percent engineered to kill Mm. All of his skills. All no, no, not skills. all of his skills. No, not all of his skills. Stop, stop. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> okay, a, I'll a stop. Rogue, a rogue knows how to pick a lock because he's after treasure. A rogue knows how to pick a lock because he's trying to get it, because he's, he's trying to, it's greed is his motivator, right? That is a rogue's soul, like his, not soul, but the design around a rogue is based around greed. 
He wants to find the treasure. He wants to get the loot. He wants to get as much of it. And if possible, he doesn't want to have to fight somebody in order to do it. He wants to be sneaky about it, right? An assassin. Rachel, 82 their, robots, mech travelers. Sorry, go ahead. Keep on, Kirby. The, the assassin, right? His ability to pick a lock is all about gaining entry to facilitate a kill. And if it's for a good purpose, if he is gaining entry to slip through that lock and kill Klaus von Poppen, the merchant okay. who merchant who is okay. child trafficking and creating horror, mm -hmm. he is not doing an evil act. I I say to this, why aren't you trying to capture him to stand before a trial of his peers? Why are you Because you know the why system is corrupt him? and he will never actually be convicted. Also, so you are he's so rich. you are so which is why you're not lawful in that so case. You you're not lawful, committed. but you're not evil. You That's the vigilante, committed. Kurt. You Dude, you're committed. checkmated. You're checkmated. Murder. You stop. You no, stop. Not, you're checkmated, bro. I am not. I am not. <laughs> you are you are 100% going. You are 100% going. Von Poppen needs to die. Why? Because the system's corrupt. Okay, so Well, no, mean? I'm saying I'm someone to, might make I'm that choice. Sneak. I'm saying someone I'm might make that choice and not be evil. I'm not saying they're right. I'm just saying they might do it and not be evil. All right. Let's look at how Matt Mercer uh, talks about assassins. And uh, the, the, yeah, he's like, love this guy. He's so much fun. He's so great. This is six years ago. Hello. We won't watch the whole thing. I'm a voice actor and the dungeon master for Critical Role here at Geek and Sundry. And today's wonderful topic of GM tips is curbing murder hobo behavior and running evil campaigns. <laughs> So evil campaigns, having an assassin in your party is a really no tough thing. You do or how alluring the heroics may be and how strong the call to glory and justice might prove. Sometimes the players will give in to the id and become impulse driven murder hobos. A murder hobo, by the way, is a player character in a role playing game that has no home and wanders the land killing things and taking all the shit off their corpses. While this style of play can occasionally lead to some ridiculously funny scenarios, it can make it difficult to maintain a long-form, respectful narrative for the whole party and for you. However, there are a number of interesting and fun ways to develop great role-playing and story moments out of these scenarios that can also possibly curb perpetuating such behavior in the future. Now, many of these are written for fantasy games, but these notes can be easily tailored to many other genres and settings. Here's an example. The players get into an argument with a merchant and end up stabbing him with a sword and killing him. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. I've probably done it. In the game. In, in the game. In the now game. Consider the legal ramifications of such an act. <laughs> Will the party now try to hide the body and play it off like nothing happened? If so, do they succeed? Or is there now a manhunt for a murderer within the city and the party is always dancing around the room or whenever it comes up? Do they begin seeing wanted postings with characters that look eerily familiar? Does all right, so I'm gonna jump forward to alignment. Now, talk in advance with all the players and have them coordinate characters that can have some semblance of working together in collaboration. Lawful evil as an alignment works well for this as respect for structure and rank can aid in maintaining party cohesion when everyone is being an evil f Now be aware there are degrees of immorality and not all of the same kind of evil and not all players must be evil. A neutral individual among evil companions can still serve the same purpose. And one could even start as a good character who slowly is corrupted by their surrounding companions. Just check in with what kind of campaign the folks want to play out. Is it more serious, dramatic, dark criminal underground story? Or the sillier Saturday morning cartoon show villain type story? Both are a lot of fun, but make sure you're all on the same page before you get too deep into the nuts and bolts. Have players consider evil with limits or a code of conduct. It helps when defining your character, what their boundaries are, and what drove them to the darker side of life. Let that internal conflict lead some interesting inner party encounters. Last point I want to, to be clear. One. Make sure you and all of your players are clear on what elements of evil you are comfortable with and which elements everyone is not comfortable with. You want to avoid a circumstance where a PC eventually pushes things too far and makes it very awkward or too dark to continue enjoying the game. Define those limits early. If any time a player begins to push those boundaries, you are allowed to, as a GM or a player, to put a pause on it and check in with the others just to be safe. Another cool thing is to consider a plot that enables the PCs to work towards a... Okay, I'm going to pause there. Rachel, you gave the, the applause. Thoughts? Uh, communication is key in every given scenario mm -hmm. possible. If someone is uncomfortable with something, they need to say it, or at least if someone notices that someone else is uncomfortable, they can check in and make sure that they're okay with it. Communication so good. Do your session zeros, friends. They're so important and so nice. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Oops. Oops. I had to pull up all my uh, documents here. I was going to open up this other dragon mag. So, uh, Rachel, then you're wow. saying session zero is the panacea to this issue. I mean, it's important to <laughs> make sure you what? have what? that what? communication set up before the game continues and knows that if someone ever gets uncomfortable in the game, that they can feel free to bring it up at any given point. Right. And I was being facetious. Kurt, we're, we're oh. going to come back, Kurt. I was being I was being facetious because clearly session zeros are important, but I think the idea that a session zero fixes everything is, I mean... It doesn't fix everything. Or, 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 or prevents... If it's a 10 or 20 episode... Uh, campaign maybe but when you talk about like three-year campaigns two-year three or four-year camp you'll have people coming in and out it has to be a constant check-in and rachel you've oh, seen me you've seen me do this uh on occasion and in I our games it immensely. um uh, much more than you appreciate kurt right it's okay. <laughs> you can appease him. Appease him. this feels appease like him. a very lean <laughs> I'm, te I'm teasing. All right, Kurt, come 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 back to what you want to say, Kurt. <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to. I wanted to, if we could play back your little reel here oh. um, with Matt. It uh -huh. straight up set where it straight up said assassins at the top, and then it gave a no. It doesn't zero. It says how to run Killer. an evil RPG. It doesn't no, say assassins. No, it doesn't. no. All right, no, I'll, no. I'll pull it back up. Here you go. No, no, not that. Not uh, that. Oh, 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 oh which had, one? You had a you had a little chart that specifically listed off. It said assassins. Then it said apprentice zero. Then it said killer two thousand. Yeah, that was that. You're talking about the one e chart. Yeah, the one e chart. Yeah, which you had to be evil in one e. I know that. Right. Yeah. Right. I think so that was wrong. So assassins are evil. Oh my gosh. In one e. They had to be evil, yes. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So hang on, hang on. Hold okay, on, hold on. okay. Here's the burning. Oh, you're still, you're still upset from before, Kurt. No, I could sense it. So, I, so, I'm no, sorry no, I cornered no, you, bro. No, no, I didn't mean to do no, that no. to you. No, 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 no. All right, blue box. Everybody in blue box, get ready for this. Get ready for this. <laughs> okay, all right, strap up. Here we go. Am I thinking hat on? So are you saying that the optional rule of 5e regarding alignment for a known previous editions, evil class is acceptable. Are you saying you're embracing 5e and that moral grays can be applied to what would normally be considered an evil class via rules as written? Kurt. Are you saying you embrace Kurt. 5e? Kurt, Kurt, not only am I saying that, if you rewind this about 15 minutes ago, I already said that. I acknowledged I was being hypocritical on two sides of the fence with certain topics. However, I think my hypo mm -hmm. hypo hypocrisy mm -hmm. is logical, Six. which I guess makes okay. sense in Rachel's, uh, so I'm being lawful by my own uh, lawfulness, <laughs> but I think, I, I think the assassins were unnecessarily restrict. I think you can absolutely have and should have evil assassins, but I think having a skill set to be effective at targeted killing can be done in ways that are not evil. Kurt, give me a high five. Yup! Oh, that's right. You heard it here first. You'll never see Oh, my internet's breaking up. Wait, what's going on? I'm sorry, guys. Oh, the stream is gone. Good night, everybody. No, Kurt, I already said that. I already said that, dude. Someone what? This please. episode was lost. It never made it to YouTube. Oh, <laughs> no, it's gone. Sorry, export didn't work. Oh, no. no, I I have said I that for I, I could die happily. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I have said this from the beginning. I don't I don't adhere to everything in one e. I never have. I do adapt. I like changes to systems, but there are certain things that are my preference at my table. Lawful good paladins, true neutral druids. Druids don't care about law evil they don't care about good and chaos they care about the environment and neutrality um but to me the idea of the assassin is a skill set which can be used he's not tied to a deity he's not tied to an altruistic goal like nature mm -hmm. it's simply a skill set that skill set should not be restricted to evil that's my take i agree with it 
Kurt seems a little hesitant, but I agree. Well, no, but you didn't high five me, Rachel. Well, no. <laughs> I'm teasing, yourself. Rachel. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> All right. So let's look at let's look at 220 here because uh, there's a couple fun things, and then I'm gonna blow y'all's minds tonight with the most. <laughs> That's right, sweep. Oh, the chat. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. All right. It is a good point. Um, evil always thinks they're good. Yes. My, I mean, well. No, I mean, is that true? I think yes, sometimes evil. Yes, I think yes, no, John, I, no. There is John, evil that thinks John, they're evil. No, a, a wise man once said, "Many of the truths we cling to rely on a certain point of view." Many of okay. the truths, but not all. Like not everyone. Not, there are people who have called themselves evil. Hold on, I'm not, no. There are serial killers who have called themselves evil. Mm -hmm. No, right. they were evil. Acknowledge and embrace that they were evil. Others mm -hmm. are deceived and think they're following some altruistic goal and their, their mentality is twisted, but not everyone that does evil thinks they are evil. Not I everyone like... that does... Go ahead, Rachel. Sorry, I was going to say, I like what Sam Curtis D said, that chaotic evil makes no apologies. Um, like, I don't think chaotic evil people necessarily, not saying all, see themselves as evil... But I do think that, like, lawful evil or neutral evil people definitely can. Yeah. I think that's fair. All right. A couple fun things here in Dragon Mag, and then I'm going to give you the mind blower tonight. Ooh, I want my mind blown. All right, this is 220. I think it was 95, I think. So we're getting a little bit on only, you know, 30 or 40 years before Rachel was born. Uh, Rachel, <laughs> what's Walden Books? Oh no, don't do that. To me. Come on. No, don't do that to me. Oh. Walden books. Oh my gosh, I missed them. Uh, oh. so many is fun. Is it safe to come out yet? Yeah, it is. I'm just teasing, Rachel. Oh. Um, coming special attractions. Uh, uh, yeah. Kurt, the the clip out letters are in here, medieval perspectives. Uh, moving quickly through this. Uh, oh you think we have good dice? Look at the hot dice, the dragon dice of 95. These things are awesome. Yeah, those were legit. Those yeah, I mean, amazing. this is like, yeah. we had really cool dice a long time ago. Um, Ed Stark article on Chits and Bits, that's fun. Uh, moving quickly through this, because there's so much in this one. Stratagems and Dirty Tricks, that's a fun uh, article. You could, uh, again, Anon Archive has all of these. Uh, moving through, oh, Guess what is a fantastic map making system for RPGs in 95? Pro Fantasy Software. Mm, that's the maker. That's not the software. Anybody in the chat? It's still used today. But on a PC with a three and a half inch floppy disk, you can load this. Yes, sir. Anyone in the chat? What what software is this? No, it's not Paint. paint. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not it's not Paint, Thomas. It's not Paint. No, Pro Fantasy is the maker. Come on, guys. Campaign cartographer. Campaign cartographer still the complicated AutoCAD uh, standard. Yeah, you got it. Mike got it. Campaign cartographer. Um Back in 95, the first edition, uh, all kinds of fun stuff in this 220 uh, Dragon Mag. Scrolling through quickly here. Oh, more of the Ice Merp stuff. You want a game and a world that has everything? Middle Earth has it all. Miniatures play by mail. Let's go. We can play by mail, Rachel. Done you know, and done. Sign me up. I, <laughs> you know, I, ha I have to admit, I didn't like that Middle Earth system. Interesting. Hey, you've already oh, said that. I liked, I, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it when Cubicle Nine got a hold of it, and then they did the One Ring rule set. I really enjoyed that. I despise that. That's. I mean, that's unfortunate for you. <laughs> uh, opinions. No, it, it, you know, Jason. That's right. That was not email. That was actual mail. Uh, play by mail. Uh, by no, not by Pony Express. No, by mail. Um, we covered this last time. Ed Stark, the hired killer, uh, why you shouldn't shy away, different types of assassin um, tropes, anti-heroes, lone wolves. Uh, these are all super fun. Um, and then RPGs, rifts, there's Robotech uh, stuff in this. 
uh, episode. Uh, da -da -da. Let's go here. Let's, let's zoom. There's so many things I wanted to show you guys. Star Quest, convention reports, Forgotten Realms. Those were always cool. The, the, the convention reports, those were always actually really cool. Yeah, I mean, this was the heyday. Um, GURPS. Yeah, GURP. There's, uh, I know there's Call of Cthulhu in here, um, More Forgotten Realms, We're Magic the Gathering, Domania. Uh, there's Call of Cthulhu. I knew that was in here. Call of Cthulhu. Way back in the day. Still thinking about that game, Kurt. And it was run so well, Still Kurt, recently. So um, the forums. Wait, I'm Ravenloft. You haven't seen it? Ravenloft. You know, I mean, you have all the things. Raven. way back then i mean all of them are here this is the, the the spawning grounds the heyday real games for real computers the fun stuff um all the old school pc games uh oh you got your domains of dread let's go very nice um <laughs> wait this one no shadow without light i thought that was super cool artwork there the changeling the dreaming oh man i remember that game yeah you do? I never played that. Yeah. It's a White Wolf game. Oh, okay. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, very scary. Very scary. All right. Lovely and spook. Yeah. Uh, and we're getting close on time here. I Matt, more magic. Uh, I think there was something else I wanted to show you. Oh, Dark Sun in this episode. Some of the early days of Dark Sun. I don't think uh, John Demon Gun has seen this. Here's a Thrykreen. Um, doing some damage to someone and the hunt's end a great it's really fun uh, fictional hey thank you Pat uh, for that oh Canadian thank you Patrick for Pat uh, doing that and it's a fun article here check this out all of these it's free download them read them so many ideas for your player characters for your DM stories I don't care what edition you're playing Highlander games I mean all of it oh, yeah, all of it there's just great ideas. Ideas, yeah. Someone, yeah, because yeah, Kurt, like, you can make it work with any system, but just the ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's all about which works best for you. Oh, so back to what Rachel said. Your own idol, your own, uh, you know, alignment. Whatever you think is right is right. No, no, no. I was, I was specifically talking <laughs> about rule systems at that point. I, I, I'm teasing. Uh, the I'm uh, teasing. Webster's Dictionary clearly defines. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh as we conclude i'm gonna i'm gonna share something fun with you guys uh you may not know about this rachel kurt you might uh and then i'm gonna give you guys the final word before we raid into jay you cannot talk about assassins but you can you should not talk <laughs> about assassins without Wait, oh, there's two things. Kurt, you already brought this up, but for Rachel's benefit, uh, this is what Kurt, Kurt was talking about a moment ago. So on the original 1E e, uh, table, the assassin, if he snuck and caught up with an opponent who was helpless and he had a hit, he had a percentage chance for a one-shot kill. No hit points, doesn't matter. And I actually think this makes a lot of sense. So if you had a level let's say a level four assassin here, and he were um, assassinating a level six uh, character, if he managed to get into that situation where the character was helpless, snuck up at him at night, he had a one in two chance, a 50% chance, one shot kill. That's what made this class super deadly in the OG That's editions. so cool. It, that wasn't the thing that that wasn't the thing that actually made me think that the assassins were the were the most deadly thing, right? Because assassins, despite them being evil, um, <laughs> have one of the coolest ability. At least in a former edition, they had one of the coolest abilities, and I specifically I specifically have it up because I thought it was the neatest the neatest thing ever. Okay, Kurt, I'm uh, sorry. We'll we'll get a like a ninja uh, set up next time so you can share your screen or if you because I know sometimes you don't send. Here. Yeah. But. No, um, shit. Where's it at? Sorry. Um, was it in Pathfinder? Yeah, it was. It was in Pathfinder. I think it's what it was. Um, exactly. The, like the video game. No. Uh, where's it at? Where's it at? Crap. I was just looking at it. T so Basically, take your time. They have, 
they have an ability, right, to where if they enter a town and spend 10 days and 25 gold, they can make themselves a new alias within that town with status and reputation. With Again, you're talking about click. No, I'm not talking about click. Yeah, click. I mean, this is what the vigilante class does. They have that. They have very similar, very similar stuff, Kurt. Click, baby. All right. So, Rachel. Yes. Can you see my screen? I do. The I assassin that. bug. That's a pretty fun piece of artwork. This is from, all right, who can tell me in the chat which of the old school D&D books the assassin bug is found? No Googling or chat GPTing. The Fiend Folio, Greg is on it tonight. Um, once again, one that Rachel sees here, five feet from her every Sunday. I will never forget <laughs> it ever again. <laughs> so the assassin bug, kind of a fun uh, off topic. So let me read this, super small font. They resemble giant blue bottle flies with four limbs, miniature arms and legs. The assassin bugs are rarely seen except during their mating season, one day in every two months. When a male and female are encountered flying in search of a host for their offspring, the natural host is human, but assassin bugs have been known to lay their eggs in demi-humans, or rarely humanoids. Demi-humans in the old, that would have been elves, dwarves, you know, humanoids would have been, you know, orcs, other sorts of non-human classes, races rather. The male will always attack first. It will bite the victim for 1d4 hit points of damage while the female flies nearby. As close as the intended victim as possible, consistent with not risking the female being attacked. If the male's attack succeeds, its saliva will paralyze the affected area of the victim's body unless the victim makes a saving throw at plus two. The male will continue to attack until destroyed. For purposes of the aerial combat, they are maneuverability class C. That's old school stuff, don't worry about that. As soon as the male's attacks have achieved the desired paralysis, the female, which detects the scent of the male's saliva, will attack the affected area. If successful, the female implants her eggs into the victim's body. Um, and there is some uh, question as to what was actually meant by saliva uh, when we were looking at these old school uh, books because they were being a little bit careful with the language, but clearly this was part of the reproductive process. So she was attracted to what the male had done. The egg will hatch, producing seven to 12 larvae. Uh, during this period, only a very powerful spell like limited wish or complete heal will remove these larvae, these eggs rather. So like, this is how hardcore this, like it was, it was bad. All right, so then when the larvae hatch, they will cause one hit point of damage to the host each hour as it devours the host's internal organs. After two weeks, the larva will leave the host burrowing out of the area which the egg was originally planted, causing more damage if they're still alive. As soon as they are outside the body, they will metamorphose into full-grown assassin bugs. While the larva, so after egg stage, are in the body, they can only be killed by a number of spells like Cure Sirius would kill one larva, but had to be cast above six level by the caster. Uh, cure Critical Wounds could kill all larva, heal, or limited wish. They are also regarded as delicacies by trolls, troglodytes, and bugbears. The eggs themselves are four to five inches long, oval, and colored a deep blue. I hate it. Y'all seen the movie Aliens, right? <laughs> seen the movie Aliens? Thanks, John. I hate it. <laughs> Come on, Rachel. You love it. It's going to be in your next campaign, I'm sure. Oh my God, I was thinking what would have happened if that happened to like any characters that I know or even my own character. And don't don't think I don't have ideas. Bad. You guys are going in the Twilight no. Forest. Would this not make sense no, in the Twilight please. Woods? No. <laughs> so no not really cool. Let us get no, to the dryads. No, please no. don't throw you us obviously, you bugs. obviously You obviously haven't encountered fairies. I think I'd rather deal with the assassin bug than a fae of any kind. That's then fair. of any kind? Okay, Kurt, man, you are you are born to hyperbole, my friend. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Fairy? The any fairy, any the fae? fae? The fae do things. Any fae, fae any fae, things. any fae, There's you said. No, 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 fae. I said, I said, I would rather deal with an assassin bug than deal with any fae. Because fae are trixies, and trixies are hobbitses, and hobbitses 
Oh, so you'd rather deal with an assassin bug than a hobbit? Yep, 100%. I don't agree with I, you. I just, I'm glad we covered this. It was one last punctuation mark on <laughs> <laughs> Kurt's eye twitching. <laughs> All right. I promised you guys would have the last word. Uh, let's go, Rachel. Kurt, you will finish this up tonight. Go ahead, Rachel. Oh. Last words. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us. I uh, was going to end up running a game for an assassin-like character, and it was set in the Feywild, and it was really going to be really cool ended up falling through that happens but this is a fun conversation to talk about assassins and their different alignment <laughs> and thank you all for joining Maybe. us with it because it's been a delight to see you all t type and chat and just right. uh, engage and talk. so rachel like before <laughs> before i go to kurt if you had let's say you were trying to run a good campaign a meaning not that you wanted to have some sort of altruism, but, you know, they they want to save the kingdom. The campaign is to do something which is sort of aligned in a in a good way. How could you see a an evil assassin-like character being introduced into that campaign with that party? So if they had to be evil, there are... I have been in several campaigns where we've had betrayals in that there are characters that are put in with the intent of blending in and seeming like they are good when they are in fact not. Um, so that would be probably the base. I'm sure there are more creative ways to go about it as well, but I'm sure there are. My head. No, I, I'm, I'm sure there are more, but I, to me, that's a super fun thing to do. I've only done it two or three times in 30 something years of DMing, 40 years. I mean, I don't, you can't overuse that. But every once in a while, implanting an evil character in the party, you can still run a good aligned campaign. No, not Ashrin, Alexander, stop the it. Um, evil character that was in our game actually got my character killed. Mm. It was it was something. And what was that moment I, like for you? Like when you when you realized, what was that like for you as a player? Well, I was playing a different character at that time when the realization came out because we uh, didn't know that they were evil when my character died. They died trying to save this person who did not need it need to be saved um and so when i was playing my other character i rachel had to get up and step away for a minute at the revelation it was oh it was something for sure <laughs> i love that i love that kurt mm -hmm. your spooky tree i'm it's kind of growing on me so uh, wait, people can, can you show it because we have people on that couldn't see it earlier spooky tree oh jay's not on tonight all right, we'll find someone else to raid. I don't want to drag this out too long. Um, I've just, I feel like Kurt's taken the beating of his life tonight. And so I want to make yeah. sure he has time <laughs> no, to, no, 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 I'm no. teasing. No, nah, it's not, I have had, I have had strong pointed, well articulated <laughs> arguments. You, you're Kurt, just like, but, but no. And I'm like, but why? Really? Is that all? That's, <laughs> I love it, Kurt. I absolutely love it. Uh, I'm going to give you the final word tonight. The final word of tonight is, well, I mean, since nobody's done it, if you're watching this and you haven't followed, well, just click the follow. It's free. If you're already following and you haven't subbed, Amazon Prime gives you free Bezo bucks every month, <laughs> right? So just use those Bezo bucks here, right? It's an Amazon Prime. It's up, right? But if if for whatever reason your sub has lapsed, right? I don't speak French, but John does. He's not. Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. He's not going to say it. Wow. Wow. Okay. Right. <laughs> Sacre bleu. There, there we go. Is. Then one, two, three, friends. What are oh, you yeah, doing? Yeah. All right. So Anna's going to be up. It sounds like in a few minutes. Um, so you said eight o'clock. That's central or eastern, rather. So we're just ten minutes from her going ten live. Mm -hmm. Hey, ten we minutes. can talk for ten. Yeah, minutes. Yeah, we got to talk ten more oh, minutes. Oh, Almost I got an hour and a half now. All right. I, I I got some I got some words for you. Go, Kurt. Off, Go for you're, it. You're welcome, friends. I got John to admit he likes at least part of five E. <laughs> so there's that. All right. Hey, Kurt. So, Kurt. Wait. Wait. Yeah. Do I have advantage in my game? Do I use inspiration in my game? You, you, yo, okay, listen here. Listen here, sir. <laughs> your advantage and your inspiration 
is not the same thing just because you use the same word. Advantage is, is advantage is. Advantage is and advantage. It's inspiration slightly tweaked. Advantage is the same, sir. There are some inspirations that he gives that are very similar. Very, yeah. Like yep. I have I have run 5e games, Kurt. I've played games with D&D Beyond. Aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. I just so acknowledge. It nearly in writing that you <laughs> like parts of it. <laughs> I do. I do. I do like parts of 5e. I do. We're trying to get it, right? But that being said. Do See you, Robert. Do assassins have to be evil? No, they don't. But the moment they stop, they're not assassins anymore. So what are they? What are they? If they're specialized in go... killing, if they're no, if they're specialized yep. in killing, mm -hmm. but for good purpose, what are they? They're a, they are quite that right there. That's the damn list I was looking at. Um, uh, Squirrel, uh, Kurt, answer the question. What are they? if they're specialized in killing for good purpose? Mm -hmm. But they're yep. specialized in killing. What are they? What class? A, f a fighter. No. Not specialized in combat. Specialized in killing a specific target for good purpose. What are they? Mm -hmm. A fighter? Killing? Killing in of itself? There is no such thing as a good killing. There is no such thing as a good killing. Sounds ever. like you're a good aligned person. There is no such thing as a good killing. Ever. Ever. The moment you take a life, the moment you devalue a life, it is an evil act. No if, oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, so, <laughs> before, if, if someone. It's good, he didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that now we're getting, so you're <laughs> saying, you're saying the moment I take a life for whatever reason. So let's say that individual, mm -hmm. let's go back to. Uh, I'm not going to go there because the, like we've been watching some things lately about the, the 1940s, but let's say someone breaks into my home, has a yep. gun on my wife and children, yep, and I take their life to protect my family. I have devalued life and created an evil act. Nope, nope. You are defending your home. But I took a life. No. Here's so the thing, though. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Wait, Kurt, no, what do you mean? Stop saying stop. Stop doesn't mean anything, Kurt. Listen <laughs> to me, because okay, there's okay. a delay. There's a delay, right? Okay. An assassin sets out to kill, right? An assassin sets out to take a life. There's a difference between setting out to take a life versus defending yourself and in the process, you know, ending somebody, taking a life, right? Premeditated versus defensive are two very, very different things. Okay, so you I'm were just believer. You, so you're you're you're, you're yeah. Okay, so you're agreeing. You were unclear in what you said before. I yeah, appreciate. I that. I was unclear. Right. All right. So so okay. if that, that, yeah. To, if you if you're setting out your whole per what is your I am a fighter. What do I do? I sometimes take lives because I defend my friends and we get into sticky situations and things like that. Right. Okay. Cool. What are you? I'm an assassin. What do you do? Well, you see, periodically I get handed a name, and this name is someone who must be killed. And so therefore I go and kill them because I have no quandaries whatsoever. In about... which case, I'm saying that individual is most likely lawful evil. Right. But even in no matter what good sense you have, right? Okay. Right. No matter what good sense you have, right? If you're simply taking a life, whether it be because your code dictates it or you're being given an order or whatnot, right? With no, no cow. Like, so the paladin, the, the paladin that infiltrates the necromancer's lair as he's raising an undead army and, Correct. and kills him because he knows yeah. he is going to create harm across the land. That paladin Correct. has committed an evil act. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> It's exactly what you said. He sought out for purpose to kill one individual. To kill what? An undead necromancer? No, I didn't say undead. I just said a necromancer. Okay. okay. You just said a necromancer. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Raising so, an undead army, but not an He's a living right. necromancer raising an undead army to devastate the lands. That paladin seeks him out. Mm-hmm. 
And I, I Thomas, I get what you're saying. Like we're we're the, the, yeah the, yeah we're yeah we're talking TT bar. Like, like let's be careful with this. We're not, but yes, in that context, Kurt, how is okay. that evil? But here's the thing, though, right? Here's the thing, though, right? Okay, so how it's via him, it's not right. But here's the thing, though, via his tenants, it's not okay. Here's the thing. Here's the difference. Okay, here's you know, he, saying here's the thing, though, it does not change the facts of what we're saying, Kurt. <laughs> Here is the difference between okay. the paladin and the assassin, right? Ultimately, the paladin, right, will not harm innocence. That's the key thing to a paladin. Right, right, but who, Except right, but that's where it gets subjective because many times, to the point earlier, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who defines innocent? Mm -hmm. I, I think I have a good definition of that, but evil yeah. people sometimes think that they're not harming innocence even when they are. Mm -hmm. Right, but you so, gotta understand something. What your alignment is does not dictate your personality. You're equating a person who is evil to being this type person. I right? didn't say that. Whereas, well, no, 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 no. no we talked about the act of taking a life, a life with purpose, exactly. with purpose, with, with premeditation. Because we agreed in the scenario that you're yeah. defending life. That's not an evil yeah. act. But if you're going. Yeah. Even now, it's in a meta narrative. I'm still defending life if I'm that paladin going after that necromancer. I'm still defending life. It's more um, extended. You know, it's not immediacy, but I want to stop that undead army from crossing the lands and killing thousands. But I'm still targeting someone with a purpose, which I am taking as mm -hmm. good. Right. But is an assassin the one who's making those calls? I don't, I'm sorry, I don't understand. What do you mean? So a paladin seeks out undead and evil. That's their job. That's their, that is an oath of which they take. Okay. An assassin takes no oath. That's part they can. of the reason they're an assassin. No, they can. Assassins absolutely. Narrat narratively, they can. No, they can be in they guilds can. where they take oaths. They can take guild oaths. They take it. They take an oath to the guild. Show me a good Assassin's Guild. I'm not talking about that. I'm not saying there's a good Assassin's Guild uh, in, in TTPRGs. But I'm saying taking a life intentionally mm -hmm. is not always an evil act. Mm. Go back to the yeah, Paladin yeah. with the Necromancer. Tell me how he's doing yeah. it was, was evil. How what, he's do how what he's doing is evil? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I just... Okay. I, so... so, so it's, I'm not saying that what he is doing. So, is so but, so, but Kurt, so I just said, taking a life intentionally mm -hmm. is not always evil. I gave no, you an not. example of a time it's when not. taking a life. It's okay, not. so all right. But here's the okay. Thing. But here's the thing: the assassin, the assassin, right? Specifically, right? They are evil for a reason. Because here's the thing: the paladin, as an example, right? The paladin. Will let's say the necromancer is holding a person hostage, right? And the only way to get to that necromancer is through the hostage. The paladin won't go through the hostage. The assassin will. Which is why the assassin might be neutral. Mm -mm. But that doesn't make them evil, even in that case. Uh... But I, uh, but so. but we're 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 kind of You're conflating so the. Much subject. <laughs> I know. Yeah, so we're con we're conflating <laughs> the arguments. It's fun to Kurt. You're fun to talk to because you like you stick and move and then you dodge and then you slightly change. That. But I have yeah. I have enjoyed this thoroughly. Um, <laughs> the two of you are amazingly intelligent, fun. Uh, if we've said anything tonight that I don't think we have, but if anyone that has questions about anything, all hypotheticals. it's all hypotheticals. So many hypotheticals. Um, yeah. So looking at the chat here, what have I missed? But one specific assassin, oh, Ukraine, why can't they be different? Yeah. They, they, I mean, that's, you know, Kurt even talked about niche, uh, dark elf, uh, James Bond, worst spy, bow splitter gave James Bond as the example. Um, Patrick said, some Palinors are oath sworn to defend only a royal line or a holy relic. Yeah, that's a good point. Highly focused on lawfulness. Um, Alexander said, depends on the hostage. The Paladin's name is Sir Clint Eastwood. 
<laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Generally, murder for Heil is evil. Killing in defense of others is not. But then, Bill, what if you are hired to defend others? Like, to put those two clauses together. Generally, I think that's what you're saying. I agree. Yeah. I mean, murder for hire is nine times, 99 times out of 100, 990 times out of 1,000. This goes back to Kurt's niche point. I agree completely. If you're being paid to kill people, you're probably evil. But if you are being paid or hired in defense of others, is that evil? And while that, so that's why I throw out the alignment, situational thing. You know is, what? Uh, you know what? Uh-huh. I have an answer to that. <laughs> well, is there it, it is. So? Hey, we waited for this. The answer is here. Go ahead, Kurt. Here's a question for you, John. No, you said you had an answer. An answer. You said you had an You can't ask me a question. An you said you had an answer. This is an answer. <laughs> this is an answer. No, this okay. is an answer, right? This is an answer, okay? <laughs> Did the Black 13 think that they were evil? I'm sorry. Or who they are... just picked the wrong employer? Who are the Black 13? I'm sorry. Oh no! Don't even yeah, try that. Uh, it's not. It's not coming to mind. Sorry. Who are they? The Black Company. The oh, Black Company. Oh, Glenn. Glenn Cook. The Black Company. Yeah. Yeah. Did they think that they were evil, or did maybe they just pick the wrong side? No, they were absolutely. I would call them at best morally neutral. I would call most of them K Newt uh, based. But I mean, I have not read that book in years. So what are you saying they are? What am I saying that they are? I'm saying that they that they 100% are evil. And so that example in that book is the answer to tonight's entire dialogue. Mhm. Mm okay. Who you work for determines if you are if you're a mercenary, right? Prime example. You're adventurer. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Kurt. God, you keep doing this. I want to I want to no. end this session. You can you you were about to say who you work for determines what? Or determines whether or not your actions are good or evil. So if who you work for is good here's the, and tells you you must okay, kill this thing. evil person. No, no, no. Stop. 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 <laughs> stop. Wait, you're not going to say the thing is now, are you? Stop sticker. Stop. Stop. And the thing is. Stop. The thing is. Here, dude. <laughs> here's dude. the thing. You're taking the portion of the argument, not the entirety of the argument. Okay. Oh, this right. is the most fun I've had on an LA in every, like forever. Uh, this is awesome. All right, guys. Yes, uh, that's all we have time for, folks. I Thank you so much. We're going we're gonna to raid. Um, wow. Wow. So much fun, Kurt. Oh, wow. Anna B. Meyer. No, uh, I will not stop. I no, not don't stop. 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 Oh, stop. Wait, wait, the thing is, the thing is, Kurt, wait, Kurt, the thing is, I love your spooky tree. I will not have one, but I respect it. Good night, guys. Thank you, Mad Chatters. You guys were awesome. We'll see you Friday night on Discord, Friday Night Crusades. Sunday, Tears of Aired is back. Join us, join us, join us. Join us.